live from Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. The World Series on MLB The Show coming up. It's the San Diego Padres taking on the New York Yankees. With my partner Chris Singleton, I'm John Chomby. Plenty of storylines taking shape in this series as we set the stage for game four, Chris. Well, if the first three games are any indication, this has the look of a series that'll go all the way to game seven, Boog. I think this is a classic matchup, and we've seen momentum change course a few times already, but I'll tell you what, I think whoever takes this one will be feeling really good about their chances the rest of the way. Yeah, that's a good point. We've seen it before. Even when you're down 2-1, it seems like a win in game four can propel you to a series win more often than not. All right, we'll be back to get this one started after this. Next is the designated hitter, Gerald Hayden. Big time power. Hey great there. speed and great power a great athlete quite simply swings and blasts one deep to left center and no one can get there around first and hustling for second and he's in with a stand-up double went up there looking to be aggressive and got something he could handle against good pitchers you've got to take advantage of the mistakes that was right in his wheelhouse and he didn't miss a stitch So two down. Next up is the cleanup spot for the Padres. Manny Machado. Singing, you can't ask for anything more. This guy checks all the boxes offensively. He is the ultimate professional, and it doesn't just start at game time. It starts in the afternoon the way he prepares and gets ready for the ball game. I tell you what, his teammates feed off. LeMahieu gets it to first. Machado is out, and that'll do it. Padres leave one, and now the Bombers will get their shot. No score. You're watching the World Series on the show. Back for more from the Bronx. Getting the nod in this one. Gerald Hayden. What should we keep an eye on here? It's got that splitter, and it's a pitch that swings and misses. Calm fast, and they come often. Very difficult to pick up out of his hand. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. And stepping in for the Yankees, Glaber Torres. And a foul ball. What a season it's been for the rookie. I mean, he's done so much for his team, both pitching and hitting, and now he's on the mound in a World Series game. What a ride it's been for him. The pitch. Up the middle, Kim. One gone, bottom half of the first. We wondered if he'd have enough endurance to pitch late in the season, but so much for those concerns. He's grinded with his team to the very end. Here's Alex Verdugo. There's a strike. Hey, the MVP last year, he features a four seam fastball, a slider. A cutter, a splitter, and he works in a changeup. In there at the knees for a strike. Well, he's gotten ahead with two pitches down in the zone. He has plenty of options right here. He can go up, he can go away, he can add velocity, he can subtract. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. Well, three pitches down, down, fastball up, swinging, boog. It's like learning a chord progression, getting those strums right. Man, so many pitchers yeah. prefer working north south these days compared to the east west, and that was a great example right there. Line drive and foul ball. Two out. 
shots. Ground ball up the middle. Kim to first. And the Yanks go quietly. Yanks held in check. Scoreless after one. And we're back. And now it's Juan Soto. You know, Boog is a 20-year-old. This guy hit two home runs in the World Series. And the only players younger than Soto to hit World Series home runs are Andrew Jones, Miguel Cabrera, and Mickey Mantle. A chilly atmosphere here. Really what comes to mind when you think of postseason baseball. Fans doing whatever they can to stay warm and energized. The pitch. Swing and a miss as he was late. You oh, talked yeah. about the fans trying to stay warm, Boog, but it's a challenge for the players, too. Games like this really can be hard on you. The 0 2. Stays alive. The why to kick the pitch. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. Now, when you follow up a triple digit fastball with a nasty changeup, pretty much every time the hitter's going to be in trouble. And that was the plan. Get him to sit dead red on the fastball and then just make him look foolish with the off speed stuff. Austin Wells stepping in now for the Yankees. Fought off foul. Wells measures six feet two inches hitting fifth in today's lineup and he's a former rookie of the year nothing nothing here in the bottom of the second that one fouled off to the plate gets a piece there we'll do it again missed with a changeup gonna count one and two Boils a two strike pitch and he'll see another. <laughs> Lifted in the air right center field. And there's two away. Batting six. The shortstop. Anthony. And up next for New York, okay. Anthony Volpe. And that one is lifted in the air. Hauls it in to end the inning. So the Yanks go in order. We'll move to the third with no score. That one off the mark, ball one. Two quick outs, needed to get that third one, wasn't able to do it. Now you bring up the heart of this order. You got to find a way to get it done right here. And a pitch. Swing and a ball lined out towards center. Judge brings it in for the third out. Bottom of the inning, and stepping in for the Yankees, D.J. LeMahieu. D.J. LeMahieu. He back to work. That one finds the zone, 
It's 0 and 1. Cold night tonight, Boog, and that's a pretty firm fastball right there. I tell you what, memories of getting jammed, they creep it into my mind right now. The line of the pitch. And ball one to LeMayhew. One and the righty deals. Foul ball there. Kicks and deals. And another ball. Cuts and misses. It's a strikeout. He's really good hitting the baseball the other way. So credit the pitcher for having him out in front of that pitch. Clearly he had him fooled. Oswald. So digging in, Oswald Peraza. Fastball in for a strike. 0-1. Down base is empty. Outside corner for a strike. All right, now he may have not liked either of those first two pitches or agreed with the umpire's calls, but at this point, he's going to have to bear down and be ready to hit anything close to the zone. Got it by him for the K. Away, away, away. And clearly that was the plan right there. He just wasn't able to put it in play. And that should tell you something as a hitter. Sometimes you're a little too conscious of the inside pitch, and you're not able to cover that outside part of the plate. So clearly some adjustments to be made next time. And next for New York, Everson Pereira. That one in triple digits. Two down, nobody on. Foul ball. Still tied at zero, last of the third. He goes down looking. Down in order, go to Yankees. And we're still knotted at zero. The fourth game of the World Series. Leading off. Here's the Four Yankees, Yankees. leadoff hitter, Glaber Torres. And here it comes. Torres. In there at the knees. Well, after scoring runs, this is where you're looking for that shutdown inning. Get that hot team back in there to swing the bats. And he deals. Tapped at the plate, but it's a foul ball. Hater deals. Got him. And one gone in the fourth as they get the leadoff man. Well, that's the money maker right there. Two strikes, slider down and away from the same side thrower as the hitter. I mean, that's just tough. You're looking to protect with two strikes and very difficult to lay off. Verdugo, the batter now as he swings and misses for strike one. The Yankees hitless so far in the game. Swing and a pop off in foul ground. And Verdugo is set down. Two down. The center field, number 99. Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge at the plate.
And a strike right through there. That one in triple digits. If I'm at the dish right now, I am aggressive over the heart of the plate. This guy's been filling up the strike zone, so you know you're going to get a good pitch to hit. And one as one. nasty as his stuff is, you might as well take all three swings. Righty delivers. Got him. Three up, three down, inning over. Yanks held in check. They trail things here, 2-0. Up next for the Padres, the designated hitter, Gerald Hayden. There's a swing and a drive. Judge going back on it. Gone! That's his fifth homer in the series, and they add a couple more. It's 4-0. Chris, he's homered in back-to-back -back games now. Yep, seeing the ball well, and he's got his timing locked in. He's looking pretty dangerous at the dish right now. He came out of his shoes on that one, but managed to keep his mechanics intact long enough to get to the ball and through it, and it went a long way. Back now in the Bronx. We well, head to the Yankees. bottom of the fifth. And now the, the right fielder, Juan Soto. Wow. And a pitch. Soto. And first offering is fouled off. They've got a potent lineup. And when you think about teams capable of rallying from this kind of deficit, they're right at the top of the list. Oh, and that liner got him. Not in time, and he reaches safely. And now they'll hustle out to check on him. That was quite a shot he took as you see him down on a knee. Yeah, clearly in some real pain, but he will not want to come out of this game if he doesn't have to. It's looking to me like he's going to try to shake it off and continue. Man at first, here's the Yankees catcher now, Austin Wells. He's 0 for 1. For you growing up in New York City, I mean, you're a big sports fan. Tell me about your experience with the Yankees growing up. I really went to Shea Stadium more than I did to Yankee Stadium. I grew up a Phillies fan. There was one game, though, that I went to as a kid. I sat in the upper deck. It was the game that Bo Jackson hit three homers in his first three plate appearances and then hurt a shoulder diving for Deion Sanders inside the park home run. That's probably the most memorable game that I ever attended as a fan at old Yankee Stadium. Fouls one off out of play. Back to our left. The Yanks down by four here in game four. And takes low for ball one. It's a good take. And they'll do it again. pitch keeps the at bat going with a foul ball five foul balls in this at bat so far and these two are going head to head you can see the crowd they're starting to get into it a little bit more and more each pitch even though there hasn't been a ball in play yet fouls it back with two strikes that one lifted to left Azokar pulls it down and he makes the catch. 
One down. Say four homers in 22 games at Old Yankee Stadium. What do you remember? Well, I remember my rookie year hitting two in one game. And, you know, before that game in the clubhouse, there was a gentleman there who owned a suit company there in downtown Manhattan. And he said to me, hey, kid, you hit a home run in the game tonight. Come over to the store tomorrow and I'll give you a free suit. The Padres leading by four here in game four of the World Series. And strike two. So I went into the game. I happened to hit two when I walked into the store the next day and he looked at me and said, you're trying to put me out of business, aren't you? And that was a <laughs> great, great experience that I had as a rookie playing against the Yankees playing in New York. Puts it in the air out towards left center. Sizing this one up. Snags it for the second out. So did Super Joe give you two suits? Super the Joe man. hooked me up with the two suits. DJ LeMayhew. Up to the plate steps DJ LeMayhew. 0 for 1. He struck out swinging last time. And a big swing and a miss. 0 and 1. And a strike there to LeMayhew. Oh, he's got to be pretty proud of this outing so far. Sometimes guys cower coming into a ballpark like this, but he is attacked hitters. Pitching on the road like this is very impressive. This has been a treat to watch. That pitch just misses the inside corner, and the count one and two. Goes down looking for the strikeout. A controversial called strike three to end the inning. Another frame in the books as the perfect game falls by the wayside. It's the Padres four and the Yankees nothing. And welcome back to the ballpark. And now the DH Oswald Peraza. The wind of the pitch. That one in triple digits. When a guy's throwing a lot of first pitch strikes as a hitter, you got to be ready to hit. Now, that's not going to help you get deep into his pitch count and into the bullpen, but you got to take what he's offering that day. That's in there, and that is strike two. And it really looks like these hitters have been in between with their timing today. Good fastball, excellent slider, but they've not been able to commit to one velocity and stay there. Going to now. That one just misses. Up the middle, Kim throws the first in time. Leadoff man retired in the sixth. Well, he's doing a nice job of keeping the, the ball baseline. out of the air. Ever lets the defense there. work behind him with another ground ball. Oh, right Good execution. Everson Pereira stepping in now for the Yankees. And a foul ball. One out, base is empty. Next offering in there for a strike. That is strike two. I'll try to bunt for a hit right there, and you can tell he's trying to get something, anything going offensively. And down on strikes, and now two gone. Wow, that's a tough call for the hitter, but the pitcher will take that all day long. Not quite in the strike zone, but he found a spot that the umpire is going to, at least for now, allow him to get that call. So hitters are going to have to make an adjustment, but pitchers are going to learn from those things and really try to exploit them if they can. Back to the top of the lineup. Here comes Glaber Torres. Swings through that one for strike one. No ball. One strike. Two down. Nobody on. Here in the bottom of the sixth. And that's in for a strike. Well, this guy's so comfortable hitting with two strikes. Even a good pitch early in the at-bat. If he's not ready to pull the trigger, he's not worried if he gets to an 0-2 count. 
two outs. And down on strikes he goes. And it's a three-up, three-down inning. Make it six shutout innings for him out there now. It's the Padres four and the Yankees nothing. Bottom of the seventh. Now the left fielder, Alex Verdugo. The left fielder, Alex Verdugo. He back to work. This pitcher's done a good job of disrupting the hitter's timing with the mix of pitches and changing speeds. You want to keep that front foot inconsistent for the batter. Their swings are hesitant, and that's exactly what you want on the mound. The next offering misses, and it's a ball and a strike. Notice how they're swinging too early or too late? That's a timing problem. They need to guess right on a few of those pitches, and I mean make an educated guess. In the air, left field. And it falls. Man aboard on the leadoff single. Only two hits allowed so far tonight, Boog. So I don't think that one will disrupt his momentum all that much. You know, he's really been on top of his game, commanding his pitches all night long. Here comes Aaron Judge. Right through there for a strike. If you're going to get something going, this is the time to do it. You get the leadoff man on. Everybody's got to look over the shoulder and say, I'm just going to keep the line moving. Don't try to do too much. And he'll won. The Yankees looking to rally. Man, that's just a nasty splitter. Bottom falls out of it. You don't see a lot of guys throw that these days, but I tell you what, he's got a good one. Right-hander kicks deals. Got him swinging. Slider got him for strike three. Well, that right there is just a pitcher's pitch. Tailing away from the hitter, low and away with some good action at the end. You know, even if he gets the bat to that ball, it's probably just a weak ground ball to the opposite side. I tell you what, that's a tremendous two-strike pitch. Soto at the plate now. That's ball one. Talk about the right guy at the right spot. They really need a rally, and this guy is someone you can believe in to find a way to get on base. On the ground to first. Gets to it with a slide. Over to Kim. One. What a double play that was. Inning over. Still in total command on the mound with seven shutout innings. It's the Padres four and the Yankees nothing. Ready to begin the eighth. So digging in now for San Diego, Gerald Hayden. He's not going to get cheated up there. No, he's not. He's looking to do damage with every swing he takes. The right-hander back to work. And he swings and lifts one to deep center field. Judge going back. Just missed it. Ready for the bottom of the eighth. And here's the catcher, Austin Wells. The wind in the pitch. And a strike right through there. That one in triple digits. Wells checks his swing, appeal to third, and that's a swing according to umpire Mike Fillmore. And he'll two. And a foul ball, he stays alive. The 2 Caught him looking for the K. Anthony Volpe stepping in now for the Yankees. And it's fouled away. Tapped out front of the plate. Slings to first. And a couple of quick outs. Now better. The third baseman. DJ LeMahieu. And now it's DJ LeMahieu digging in. Who's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. Swing and a miss. 99. How do you do? 
The Padres leading by four late here in game four. Clips the outside corner, and it's nothing in two. Tonight, his slider has been really impressive. I mean, tight spin. Seems like the hitters aren't picking it up out of the hand. Gets under and pops it up. Should have this one. And he makes the catch. And that is that. So the Yanks go in order. They're down 4 nothing. Here at New Yankee Stadium in Yankees. the Bronx. Last chance for the whole team. Now it's the DH. Oswald Peraza. I mean, his pitch efficiency, ability to get ahead and count, at times pitch to contact, let the defense work behind him. That's why he's still in the game here in the ninth inning. Fastball for a strike. You just don't see it that much anymore. A guy being this efficient and getting this deep into the game. I wonder if he's going to be able to close it out. There's just something about that ninth inning. But being at under 100 pitches, he's still got plenty of fuel left in the tank. Throw over to Cronenworth. And the leadoff man retired here in the ninth. The first baseman, Everson Pereira. He's two outs away. And now the first baseman, Everson Pereira. Went down looking on three pitches last time. Let's see if he can be a little more aggressive right here. Breaking ball clips the corner. That's a strike. Swings through that one. One down, base is empty. That one just misses. Now one and two. Close pitch there, and he's kind of wondering where it missed. You know, getting a feel for each umpire strike zone is something that pitchers and hitters really have to think about and work on from game to game and sometimes from at bat to at bat. Got him looking and he did not like the call. Well he's going to have some thinking to do when he leaves the ballpark after this one. Yeah, that was his third strikeout and this one looking Way obviously going. so he's been a little overmatched. Right. He's got to find a way just to be more competitive up there at the plate. Torres the next to hit takes ball one two down nobody on we're in the last half of the ninth inning two outs labor gets a piece one and two. is just one strike away and a swing and a miss and that is the ball game terrific job in this game he scattered two hits and pretty dominant efficient with his pitch count got himself all the way to the finish line and finished what he started So singy as the numbers show a great performance on the mound in this one. Absolutely. And that really set the tone from the beginning. A fantastic effort. A 4 nothing shutout in this one. For Chris Singleton and our entire crew, I'm John Chomby saying so long.